Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Zotec 2-in-1 oscilloscope and digital multimeter. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I want to give a little background on myself. So this is my first oscilloscope. It's been many years since I used an oscilloscope. It would have been back in college. So that's the perspective I'm coming from. So we'll see how easy this is for me to use. So let's get this out of the package. So it comes in this pouch. Here we have the probe. Here we have the multimeter leads. So here's the lead here. You can see it's very sharp. Put that back on. This also comes with a temperature probe. It's a long one. It's covered by this part, but it looks like to be about that long. So I have some other Zotec meters, and I have one that has probably the same exact probe. It's very nice. You can stick it down into things. And here's the oscilloscope itself. So the black here is a hard plastic, and the red is a soft like rubbery kind of plastic. We have rubbery buttons here. On the side, we have the USB charging on it. And then we have the test signal for the oscilloscope. Here's where we plug in the probe. On the back, we have a kickstand. Doesn't lock open, but you can set it like so. This is where we put our leads in. So we have your input here, which has volts, ohms, hertz, diode, continuity, temperature, capacitance. We have the common here. And then over here, we have the place we put in when we're reading milliamps and up to 10 amps. So it has a little sticker on here so you don't accidentally put the probes in the wrong place. It has some plastic here over the screen, so I'll pull that off. There we go. So this has an IPS display and does have a user manual and a charge cable, USB Type-C. So if it's like the other Zotac meters I have, the manual is going to be very good. Lots of detailed information in it. Talks about the display and the different functions. So you can look at the table of contents here. So if you want to do AC-DC voltage, you can go to page 18. It talks about how to do that. So I think that's very useful if you're just getting into this and you may kind of have an idea of what you're doing, but this can help be a nice refresher. And here we have the specs. You can pause and read through those. And here's the oscilloscope specs. So the bandwidth on this is 10 megahertz. So I'll turn this on, I'll hold down the power button. And here we can see the oscilloscope display. Now, if we want to go to the multimeter, we can hit mode. And here we have the multimeter display. So let me get the leads plugged in. So I'll plug into the input and the comm there, get this set up. So here you can see we have the analog style display here and we have the digital display. So here I have a battery. I'll touch the leads to it. And we got 1.597 volts. So on the bottom of the display here, we have different functions and you can press the function keys to access them. So F1, we have the volts. We can press this and go to AC volts and it's true RMS. Then the next one over, we have resistance, capacitance, diodes, and continuity. So here I have a resistor. Not sure what the value is. I'll just hold it on here. And it's 10K. Let's try a capacitor. And we can see the little symbol here. There's capacitor. I have a capacitor here. And it says five microfarad and this on here says 4.7 let's try the continuity continuity is something i use all the time let's see how responsive it is it's very responsive then we have amps and it has a little message that comes up and tells us to move our leads and we have micro amps here now we can also do temperature and that was on this last one too and you put the temperature probe in here so as a multimeter this has all the features you would expect very easy to use very nice display it also has max min and average on here now let's take this and hold it onto this battery here and if we want to hold the value we can press hold save and now it's holding the value let's do that again this time we'll hold that down and that saved an image. So this has storage on it, so you can connect it up to a computer and download the images from it. So that's the basics of the multimeter. I'm going to read through the manual and get acquainted with the oscilloscope, then I'll come back and I'll demonstrate it. Okay, so I've read through the manual a bit, and the first thing I'll do is demonstrate charging this. So I have it plugged into my USB charger. I'll open up the side, I'll plug in, and here we can see it's charging. So it's currently charging at 0.7 amps. So this is powered by an 18615 lithium cell. So if that goes bad over the years, you can open this up and replace it. Now, a nice thing about this is since it's battery powered, it can be electrically isolated, but you do have to make sure you unplug it from charging. So if you want it to be electronically isolated, you would unplug it. Now, if you still need to connect it to power, you could use a isolated power bank or something to plug it into. So I got the probe out here. And it came with some little color rings. That's in case you were to use this with a different oscilloscope that had multiple inputs. It also has this adjusting screwdriver. 
So to attach this, you stick it here on this BNC connector and just turn it, and it locks in place. So it's real easy. And then we can go to the side here, and you can see it says ground and signal. So I can clip the ground here. I'll pull back here and you have a little hook, and we'll hook that on the signal. And here we can see a square wave. Now we also want to set the probe to 10x. There we go. I'll hit auto. And you can see how it's curving up there. I'll take the screwdriver here and I'll turn it and adjust that. So you can see as I turn the screwdriver, it's changing that. So we can calibrate it right there. It's pretty sensitive. So there we have a square wave. So I'll turn the overhead light off so we have a little less glare on the screen with the camera. It's very easy to read in person though, even with the light on. So I can use the direction keys on either side of the menu button to change this. So I can press up or down. Now if we look here, this changes the scale. So each of these sections is 100 millivolts. So now this is 50 and we're at 200. And then we can change right and left. We'll change the time scale. So that's one millisecond. This is 50 microseconds. This is 500 microseconds. This is 250 microseconds. And actually here, I might be able to adjust this just a little bit better. I don't know, it's pretty good. There we go. So I can make those adjustments because I'm on volume time here. I can also go to move, and now I can use those keys to move up and down, left and right. I can also adjust the trigger. So on an oscilloscope, a trigger is what it uses to recognize a waveform. So you can have a rising or falling voltage. So this little line here on the left, this little triangle, and that moves up or down, that is the trigger. So you can see I have it off of the waveform and the waveform is moving around. So I'll move it up until it's in the waveform. Actually, I said on the left, it's on the right. I'll move that up and now it's captured and it can recognize the waveform. And then on the right here, we have AC. This is AC and DC coupling. So on the second row of buttons, there's an auto button. I'll press that and that will try and find the signal and put the correct settings on it. So here we have the square wave. And then to the right of that, we have the hold save. So I can hit hold and it will stop this. And now I can move around it. And if I hold it down, just like with the multimeter, we can save the screen. Now, if I hit menu, we have other options here. We have AC coupling, we have trigger mode, we have auto, normal, and single. And then for the trigger, we have rising and falling. Then on the probe, we have 1X and 10X. Then you can change the language. We can do auto off. 15, 30, 60, 120, or none. Then we have backlight with 30%, 50%, 80%, 100%. So I had that on 30% and it's very visible. And then on the right, we have more measurements. So if we hit that, we'll have more measurements come up on the screen here. Oh, I've stopped. There we go. So if we turn that on, it adds another line of measurements there. We'll turn that off. I'll go to the right, we have calibrate. So if you hit that, it'll take a couple minutes, it'll calibrate it. We have reset, we have storage enter. So you can press that, it will put it into a mode where when you plug it into your computer, it will show up like a flash drive. So I'll turn those off. Let's go back to volume time. So now I'm going to hook it up to a signal so we can measure it. Okay, so I'll remove the probe here and here. So for a signal generator, I have this headphone cord plugged into my computer. I have a website that has a signal generator on it. I'll hook up to the ground here and I'll hook up to the tip like so. And I'm currently playing a one kilohertz sine wave. So I'll hit auto range. And here we have a one kilohertz sine wave. So if I press up, we can change the voltage. So we're at 200 millivolts per division. Now we're at 400, 500, one volt. So I'll go the other way. And then we can go right and left, we'll change the time division. So this is one millisecond, two milliseconds, 500 microseconds, 250 microseconds. If I wanna take a picture, I'll just hold down on hold save, and we're taking a picture. So let's look at some other waveforms. Here's a square wave. Now you can see it's not a perfect square wave, which is typical, it's hard to create a perfect square wave, but it looks very nice. Let's do sawtooth, that looks very nice. And here's triangle. It's a very nice triangle. So let's do 10,000. So hit auto.
And here we can see frequency is 10K. Now this says it's a triangle wave, but it's looking like a sine wave. So however this is coming out of my computer, it's not able to produce a triangle wave of 10,000 hertz. Let's see if we can do sawtooth. That's the sawtooth. You can just barely see how it's trying to do a sawtooth. And there's the square wave is also a sine wave. Let's go down to 100 hertz. Let's start with a sine wave there. I'll hit auto. So this is saying it's 127 hertz. Let's try square wave, sawtooth, and triangle. So it seems as if my computer using this audio software is best at producing lower frequency waveforms than it is with high frequency waveforms. Of course, this is just for demonstration. A waveform generator would be a more accurate way to display waveforms on here. So that's the Zotac digital multimeter and oscilloscope. I really like the functionality of this. It has a lot of the features you'd find in a digital multimeter, but then it also has the added feature of having an oscilloscope. Since this is portable, this would be great for working on cars, appliances, and other things where you could take your oscilloscope right to the appliance. Since it's battery powered, you're electrically isolated from what you're working on. I found it very easy to use for someone who's a beginner and doesn't have a lot of experience using an oscilloscope. So this could be good for automotive repair, appliance repair, hobby electronics, things like that. Now, if you require an oscilloscope with multiple inputs and more functionality, being able to decode different signals and such, this isn't really going to work for you in that regard. But for basic usage, I think this can be great. And this also has a very nice screen on it, too. It's very easy to read at different angles, and it has very high contrast, too. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.